Okay guys, so we are going to take a look at the organs of the digestive system today. Uh, so we're going to start by looking at the salivary glands. So there are three salivary glands we have. Uh, we have ones that are located on the side of the face. These are called the parotid glands. Uh, looking underneath your tongue, here's your tongue. You have a gland underneath called the sublingual gland. And then one that is built up into the mandible, and these are called the submandibular gland. Now coming down, uh, after the food uh, has been chewed, it's going to pass through the tube called the uh, esophagus. Uh, so if the esophagus will not be visible on this view. So for that, we're gonna remove your lungs and your heart, as well as the trachea. So if we remove these structures, uh, what you can see um, and I can move the trachea as well to so kind of show, show you what that looks. So behind the trachea, you will see this muscular tube right here. Uh, this is your esophagus. Uh, please not to mistake it with this one that is red. Uh, clearly, this is a blood vessels and that's your aorta. So esophagus is the muscular tube and the run next to it is the aorta. So right here, you have this dome-shaped muscle right here. That's your diaphragm. And now we're entering into the abdominal cavity. So here is your liver. Liver is separated by a ligament right here in white called the falciform ligament. So you will have the right lobe of the liver, which is the larger one, and the left lobe of the liver, which is the smaller one. You have your stomach right here. And then if you turn around on the farthest left-hand side, you can see your spleen poking out right here. Going down, what is visible from us for us in this view? You have parts of the small intestine. The folds you see on the top are called the jejunum. And the folds you see on the bottom would be the ileum. The start of your large intestine is this pouch-like structure right here on the right lower quadrant called the cecum. The small, sorry, the large intestine moves up becomes the ascending colon, goes across underneath your stomach called the uh, transverse colon, and then comes back down on the side called the uh, descending colon. So if you're looking at the folds again, here's your cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, and then coming on the side, you have your descending colon. Now, a couple of structures that are also visible here is you have this band of uh, white. This is actually a smooth muscle called tinea coli. And what it does, it creates these pouches on the surface of the large intestine called ostra. So you can see these little bumps on the surface of the large intestine. These little bumps are your ostra. Now, the other thing that is visible here is your gallbladder poking out right here. This is the green structure, and I'll show you a different view in just a few minutes. What I can also do is if I remove this part, and not drop everything, <laughs> uh, if I remove the, this part of my uh, connection between the small intestine and large intestine, I have this connection right here. This is basically controlling food from the small intestine into the large intestine. And this is called the ileocecal valve. So here is my ileum, here's my cecum. So ileocecal valve is the connection between the two. If I look at this, here's my cecum again, right? So if I turn it around on the posterior aspect, you should see this extension right here. This is the appendix or valsiform appendix. Um, so again, if a person has a problem or appendicitis or inflammation of appendix, then the pain would be localized in the uh, right lower quadrant of the stomach. Now, um, a few things that you can also see as now that I have the model out is, again, if you're following the intestine, we have the ascending colon here, the transverse colon here, descending colon, and then notice how the intestine is twisting to go to the posterior. So this kind of a curvature you see right here, that's the sigmoid colon. And then the end of this is what is poking out, that's the rectum, which is basically where the fecal matter gets stored. Now let's take a look at your stomach. 
So as here's your stomach. So again, a stomach, if you're looking at this, will be connected to your, it would be right here. It will be connected to your esophagus, which is right here. So here is the end of the esophagus and the beginning of the stomach. So a stomach is broken down to four parts. The region that is right where the esophagus joins the stomach, this region is called the cardiac region. This dome portion of the stomach is called the fundus. The midsection mid of the stomach is called the body. And then this funnel ending to it would be called the pylorus. Now, there is an sphincter over here and there is an sphincter at the end of the stomach. So the sphincter that is between the esophagus and the stomach right here would be either called a lower esophageal sphincter or cardiac sphincter because it's proximity to the cardiac region. The sphincter that is located at the end connecting the stomach into the small intestine will be called the pyloric sphincter. So what is the stomach being connected to? Again, if I put the stomach back up, um, you can see these folds right here. These folds right here is the first part of your small intestine called the duodenum. It's relatively short, it's about 10 inches long. So compared to the folds of the intestines that are quite a few feet, uh, duodenum is relatively short. Uh, so um, this structure is duodenum. Uh, it's connected to your pancreas, which is this kind of a tadpole shape you see right here. And I'll talk about that again in just a minute. So, um, the, the goal of having a pyloric sphincter, which was the end of the stomach, connecting it to the duodenum right here, um, is um, basically controlling food entry from the stomach into your uh, small intestine. Now let's again, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the structures we have here. I already identified a splint for you earlier, but here's a better picture of it now that the organ's been removed. You have the tadpole shaped structure, that's your pancreas. You have this white line running right at the center, that's a duct, and that duct is called the pancreatic duct. And let's go ahead and remove the liver now, so we can see the structure for the liver as well. So here's my liver. Um, we're kind of flipping it and looking at it in the back. Here's my gallbladder. The white line is the still falciform ligament, which is visible right here. The larger lobe is my right lobe, and the smaller one is the left lobe. We have two smaller lobes, this one called the quadrate lobe, and this one called the quadrate lobe. And you guys can see it in terms of the gallbladder. The blue structure, or the blue blood vessels you see right here, running through uh, the liver is your, um, inferior vena cava. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our second model, uh, which is depicting the same um, digestive system, but in a more, I guess, a flat setup. Uh, we do have some structures that I want to identify, so I'm going to flip the models around for you guys so you can see it better here, starting with the head. So basically here is your oral cavity, here is your tongue, your teeth and your lips. Now the area right after or right associated with your uh, oral cavity, this is called the oropharynx. Going a little bit lower right here would be your laryngopharynx. Here again is your epiglottis, your vocal cord, so here's your laryngopharynx. Pharynx. This tube going down, that's your esophagus, right? So esophagus going down. Your lower esophageal sphincter would be right here, also known as the cardiac sphincter. Here is your stomach. First part of the small intestine, your duodenum. Pancreas. A spleen. Your liver. Right lobe. Left lobe. Gallbladder. Going farther down. Folds of the small intestine on the top, jejuna. The bottom, ileum. Connection, ileocecal valve. 
cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and then anus and anal canal. We also have the white lining, that would be your tinea cola. Little pouches would be your hostra. Uh, we have inside your stomach, if you take a look at this, and if I can open this, you have a fold inside your stomach, and these folds are what gives you the capacity to in increase the size of your stomach. So these are called rugies. And in terms of the stomach segmentation, uh, you have your cardiac region, your fundus, body, and pylorus. And um, one last thing before I forget is the transition going from ascending colon to transverse colon. You have a curvature here. This curvature is close to the liver, so this is called the hepatic flexure. On the other side, you have transverse going into the descending colon, so transverse going to descending colon, so again you have another curvature. And this curvature is right below the spleen, so this curvature is called the splenic flexure. Last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the duct system associated with your liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and duodenum. So here is the right lobe of the liver, here is the left lobe, my pancreas, and gallbladder. So this, I'm just going to name them for you, right hepatic duct left hepatic duct i should say them opposite i apologize right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct when they are merged together they form this small tube called the common hepatic duct you have a duct coming from your gallbladder called the cystic duct and when these two merge together, they form this tube right here, which goes to the duodenum called the bile duct or common bile duct. You also have a tube that comes from the pancreas or a duct coming from the pancreas called the pancreatic duct. And the region they empty into is called the hepatopancreatic ampulla, which is this region right here. And that's it for your digestive system, guys.